In the previous lecture, we discussed the special case 1 of RH criteria. Now in this presentation, we will discuss the special case 2 of RH criteria. So let's get started. So the special case 2 in RH criteria occurs when all the elements of a row in a route array are 0. So let us understand this with the help of an example. Suppose we are having a route array which starts from s power 5 and the subsequent row is s power 4. Let us assume that the coefficients of first row are a, b and c and the coefficients of second row are d, e and f. Now during the formation of third row by doing the calculations in these two rows, if all the elements in this row become zero, then this will be called as a row of zeros. For example, if we are calculating this coefficient, it will be d multiplied with b minus a multiplied with e over d. And after doing the calculations, we get 0. In the same way, if these two terms are also equal to 0, then this complete row will become a row of zeros. And this is the special case 2 of route array. Now, what is the effect of this row of zeros? The terms of next row cannot be determined and the route test fails. We can see here, if we move on to form the further rows, all the terms in the next row will be infinite. And that's why we said the terms of next row cannot be determined and hence the route test fails. So in this way, we have discussed the difficulty due to the presence of row of zeros. Let us now move on to discuss the solution to this. So whenever a row of zero occurs in the route array, firstly, we have to form a polynomial by using the coefficients of a row which is just above the row of zeros. And such a polynomial is called as auxiliary polynomial. In this case, we can see the row of s power 3 is a row of zeros. So we have to form a polynomial by using the coefficients of a row which is just above the row of zeros. That is, in this case, we have to use these coefficients in order to form the auxiliary polynomial. And let me tell you that the powers of s in the auxiliary polynomial are always even. So let us now move on to form the auxiliary polynomial a of s. And in this case, it will be d s power 4 plus e multiplied with s squared plus f. We can see here the s power 3 row is a row of zeros. And that's why we had to use the coefficients of s power 4 row in order to form the auxiliary polynomial. So the first term is d multiplied with s power 4. And then we have to use the alternate powers of s because the powers of s in the auxiliary polynomial are always even. So we cannot use s power 3 in this case. And hence the next term is f s power 0. So the auxiliary polynomial a of s is equal to d multiplied with s power 4 plus e multiplied with s squared plus f multiplied with s power 0 we can say. So in this way we have used these coefficients in order to form the auxiliary polynomial. Now in step number 2 we need to take the derivative of this auxiliary polynomial with respect to s. So if a of s is the auxiliary polynomial, we need to take the derivative with respect to s. So the derivative of a of s with respect to s will be equal to 4d multiplied with s cube plus 2e multiplied with s. d is a constant here and the derivative of s power 4 will be 4s cube and that's why this term is 4d multiplied with s cube. In the same way, e is also a constant here and the derivative of s squared with respect to s will be 2 multiplied with s and the derivative of constant with respect to s will be equal to 0. I hope you got this. Now in the next step, we need to replace the row of zeros by the coefficients of dA of s over dS. What are the coefficients of dA of s over dS? Yes, the coefficients are 4d and 2e. So we need to replace the row of zeros with these coefficients. So let us draw this route array one more time in which we are having s power 5 row, s power 4 row and this row is having terms a, b and c and this row is having terms d, e and f. Now the s power 3 row was a row of zeros and hence we need to replace the row of zeros with the coefficients of d, a of s over d, s which are 4d and 2e. So the first term in the third row will be the coefficient of s power 3 so it will be 4d. And the second term in the third row will be the coefficient of s power 1, so it will be 2e. Since the third term in this polynomial was 0, that's why the third term in the third row will be 0. So in this way, we can calculate the coefficients of remaining rows and complete the route array. So I hope you got this. 
In this slide, we have come across a very important term which is auxiliary polynomial which is a of s. If we put this a of s equal to 0, we will have an equation which is called as auxiliary equation. And the auxiliary equation plays a very important role in determining the stability whenever there is a row of zeros. So, let us now move on to discuss the importance of auxiliary equation. So, let us now move on to discuss the importance of auxiliary equation a of s equal to 0. So, in the first point, we can say the auxiliary equation is always a part of original characteristic equation. So, the auxiliary equation, we can say, is a factor of original characteristic equation. It means that the roots of auxiliary equation are also the roots of original characteristic equation. Moreover, the concept of ROZ is only valid for odd powers of S. Whatever the concept we discussed in the previous slide in order to eradicate the problem of row of zeros is only valid when the row of zero occurs in the odd powers of S. And if the row of zero occurs in the odd powers of S, then the auxiliary polynomial is always from the even row. In the previous slide, the S power 3 row was a row of zeros. And that's why we use the coefficients of S power 4 row in order to form the auxiliary polynomial. Moreover, we also have discussed that the powers of s in the auxiliary polynomial are always even. We do not have any odd powers of s in the auxiliary polynomial. And this is the reason roots of even auxiliary polynomial are always symmetric to origin. So, this is a very important point to understand that the roots of auxiliary equation are always symmetric to origin. And we know that the auxiliary equation is a part of original characteristic equation. So, whatever the poles we will get from the auxiliary equation will be symmetric to origin. So, there can be various cases in which the roots of auxiliary equation are symmetric to origin. So, the roots of auxiliary equation may be a root present in the left half plane and a symmetric root present in the right half plane. So, in that case, we can say the auxiliary equation is of second order. So, it is having two different roots. One root is present in the left half plane and the other one is present in the right half plane and these two roots are equidistant. In this case, the system will be unstable because we are having a pole in the right half plane. Moving on to case number 2, we can have a pair of complex conjugate poles on the imaginary axis if the auxiliary equation is having two different roots. In this case also we can see the roots are equidistant. Moving on to case number 3, for example if the auxiliary equation is of fourth order, then it will have four different roots. So, they may be present in the imaginary axis in the form of two pairs of complex conjugate roots. In this case too, all the four poles are symmetric to origin. Moving on to case number 4, the roots of auxiliary equation can be two same pairs of complex conjugate poles. In this case, the system will be unstable. And now, moving on to the last case, the roots of auxiliary equation can form a quadrant. In this case, the system will be unstable as we are having two different poles in the right half plane. So, these are the total number of possibilities in which the roots of auxiliary equation can exist being symmetric to origin. In case number 1, the system will be unstable. In case 2, the system will be marginally stable. In case number 3, the system will be marginally stable. In case number 4, the system will be unstable. And in case number 5, the system will be unstable. So, from this observation, one thing is very clear. If a row of zero exists in the routes array, the system will not be stable. It can be marginally stable or unstable, but it will not be stable. And the stability of system depends on the roots of auxiliary equation. And there will be a change in the stability criteria along with the number of sign changes in the first column of routes array. We need to check for the roots of auxiliary equation whenever there is a row of zeros. So, I hope you understood the importance of auxiliary equation. Let us now take one example in order to understand the special case 2 of RH criteria in a better manner. Find the number of poles of system in RHP, LHP and the imaginary axis whose characteristic equation is given below. The characteristic equation is f of s equal to s power 6 plus 2 s power 5 plus 8 s power 4 plus 12 s cube plus 20 s squared plus 16 s plus 16. So, this characteristic equation of a control system is given to us and we need to find out the number of poles of this system which are present in the right half plane 
in the left half plane and in the imaginary axis. So, moving on to the solution. Firstly, we need to check for the necessary conditions of stability. And what are the necessary conditions? Yes, all the coefficients of characteristic equation must have the same sign. We can see all the coefficients are positive and none of the coefficient vanishes. So, we can see here, this is a sixth order characteristic equation and all the powers from s power 6 to s power 0 are present in this characteristic equation. So, none of the coefficient vanishes. That's why we can say this characteristic equation satisfies both the necessary conditions of stability and hence this above polynomial is a Hurwitz polynomial. So, in order to determine the stability, we need to apply the Routh's test. So, let us start by forming the Routh's array. This is a sixth order characteristic equation. So, the first row will be s power 6 and the subsequent row will be s power 5. And we know that we can fill these two rows by using the coefficients of characteristic equation. And the coefficients are 1, 2, 8, 12, 20, 16 and 16. So, let us fill these coefficients in these two rows vertically. So, we will have 1, 2, 8, 12, 20, 16 and 16. Since no coefficient is remaining in this characteristic equation, this term will be equal to 0. We know that if we fill these two rows in a vertical manner, we don't have to follow the alternate fashion. We can fill the coefficients directly. I hope you got this. So, let us now move on to form the next row, which is the row of s power 4. So, the first term will be 2 multiplied with 8 minus 1 multiplied with 12 over so, it will be 16 minus 12 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. Moving on to the next coefficient. So, this coefficient will be 2 multiplied with 20 minus 1 multiplied with 16 over 2. So, it will be 40 multiplied with 16 over 2. It will be equal to 24 over 2, which is equal to 12. Moving on to the next term. So, this coefficient will be 2 multiplied with 16 minus 1 multiplied with 0 over 2. And we can say that this term will be equal to 16. Now, this term will be equal to 0 as we are not having any terms here in these two rows. So, moving on to form the next row, which is the row of s power 3. So, the first term will be 2 multiplied with 12 minus 2 multiplied with 12 over 2. And if we solve this, the first term we will get will be 0. In the same way, the second and third terms will also be zero because we can see the second row and the third row are identical. So, we can say this is a row of zeros we are getting here. And that's why we will not be able to calculate the next terms and complete the Routh's array and in this way the Routh test will fail. So, in order to remove this row of zeros, we need to make a polynomial by using the coefficients of above row. The row which is above the row of zeros is the row of s power 4 and the coefficients are 2, 12 and 16. So, the auxiliary polynomial a of s will be 2 s power 4 plus 12 s squared plus 16. I hope you got this. Now, in the next step, we need to take the derivative of a of s with respect to s. So, d a of s over d of s will be 8 s cube plus 24 s. If we differentiate s power 4, it will be 4s cube and 4 multiplied with 2 will be 8s cube and the derivative of s squared with respect to s will be 2s. So, 2 multiplied with 12 will be 24. So, it is 24s and the derivative of 16 is equal to 0. So, in this way, d a of s over d of s is equal to 8s cube plus 24s. Now, we can replace the row of zeros with these coefficients. So, the first term in the row of s power 3 will be the coefficient of s power 3 which is 8 and the next term will be 24. Since we are not having any coefficient left, the third term will be 0. Now, we can move on to calculate the terms of next row. So, the first term in the row of s power 2 will be 8 multiplied with 12 minus 2 multiplied with 24 over 8 and if we calculate this, it will be equal to 6. In the same way, the second term in this row will be 8 multiplied with 16 minus 2 multiplied with 0 over 8. So, if we solve this, we will have the second term equal to 16 and the third term will be equal to 0. 
Now we can calculate the terms of next row by using these two rows. So the first term of this row will be 6 multiplied with 24 minus 8 multiplied with 16 over 6. And if we calculate this, we will have 8 over 3. In the same way, the second term will be 6 multiplied with 0 minus 8 multiplied with 0 over 6. So it will be equal to 0. Moving on to the last row, this term in the last row will be 8 by 3 multiplied with 16 minus 6 multiplied with 0 over 8 over 3. If we solve this, we will have the last term as 16. Moreover, we know that the last term in the routes array is the constant term of characteristic polynomial, which is 16 in this example. So in this way, we have completed the routes array. We will now move on to discuss the stability criteria. So whenever there is a row of zeros, there is a change in the criteria of stability. The stability is determined by the roots of auxiliary equation. So along with the number of sign changes in the first column of routes array, we need to check the roots of auxiliary equation in case of row of zeros. Moreover, whenever there is a row of zeros, the routes array splits into two parts. The part of routes array which is below the row of zeros and the part of routes array which is above the row of zeros. So we can say that the stability criteria in case of special case 2 of RH criteria is dependent on two different factors. The first one is the number of sign changes in the first column. And the second one is the roots of auxiliary equation. So from the routes array, we can see that the number of sign changes in the first column is equal to zero. So the number of poles in the right half of S plane will also be equal to zero. Let us now move on to determine the roots of this auxiliary equation. So moving on to determine the roots of auxiliary equation, the auxiliary equation that we calculated is a of S is equal to 2 S power 4 plus 12 S squared plus 16 equal to zero. Now from this equation, if we take 2 as common, it will be s power 4 plus 6 s squared plus 8 equal to 0. Now this is a fourth order equation. So if we assume a variable x and if we let s squared is equal to x, then this equation will be converted to x squared plus 6x plus 8 equal to 0. x is equal to s squared. So x squared will be s power 4 and x will be equal to s squared. In this way, we have converted this biquadratic equation into a quadratic equation. And now we can easily calculate the roots of this equation. So if we factorize this equation, we will have x plus 2 multiplied with x plus 4 equal to 0. So from this, we will have two factors of x, x equal to minus 2 and x equal to minus 4. Moreover, we have assumed x to be s squared. So if we equate s squared with minus 2, we will have poles s equal to plus minus j root 2. In the same way, if we equate s squared with minus 4, we will have poles s equal to plus minus j2. So in this way, we have calculated the four roots of this auxiliary equation. Let us now move on to plot these roots in the pole 0 diagram. So the roots are plus minus j root 2 and plus minus j2. And we know that the roots of auxiliary equation or the roots of characteristic equation are the poles of the system. So we are having a pair of complex conjugate roots at plus minus j root 2 and one pair of complex conjugate poles at plus minus j2. So the first pair of complex conjugate poles are plus j root 2 and minus j root 2 and one more pair is plus j2 and minus j2. We can see that all the four roots of auxiliary equation are symmetric with respect to origin. Moreover, the characteristic polynomial is f of s equal to s power 6 plus 2 s power 5 plus 8 s power 4 plus 12 s cube plus 20 s squared plus 16 s plus 16. We can see that this is a sixth order characteristic equation. So the total number of roots will be equal to 6, out of which we have plotted the four roots. Now, in order to plot the remaining two roots, we will verify the number of sign changes in the first column of routes array. And from the routes array, we know that the number of sign changes were zero. So the number of poles in the right half of S plane will also be equal to zero. And hence, we can say that the remaining two poles will be present in the left half of S plane. So we can say that out of six poles of this characteristic equation, two poles are present in the left half plane. 4 are present on the imaginary axis and no pole is present in the right half plane. 
And since we are having two pairs of complex conjugate roots in the imaginary axis, this system is marginally stable. So I hope you got this. I'll recommend you all to go through this example one more time. And then after that, I will give you one homework problem. Try this problem on your own. And if you are able to do it, post your answers in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.